The first industrial revolution starts in many places, but one of them is Cornwall in 1712, atop a mine with a man named Thomas Newcomen. Newcomen was an ironmonger and a preacher and a man who occasionally helped save miners from the bottom of flooded mines. It's in that latter context that he helped come up with the idea of the atmospheric engine, which is really the prototype of all steam engines to follow. He was an inventor and an innovator, and in 1712, he took a whole lot of other people's ideas and built them into a single object. It was two stories high, it was loud, it consumed everything around it, water and coal, and it also changed everything too. It took a while before anyone worked out just what a powerful object this was. It's 20 years before you get to 100 of these objects in circulation. It's nearly 100 years before you get to 2000. But in that slow, steady ramp of the atmospheric engine with Watt's transformations in it into the steam engine, what you see is an object that moves from mines into factories and changes the way factory work is done. It changes the possibilities of how things can be built. It makes a series of complicated cultural and practical transformations. But in some ways, the most important moment of scale isn't that first century, but the second. And it comes in 1829 at a place called Rainhill in England, when a locomotive called the Rocket changes the way we thought about steam engines. They go from being stationary to mobile. They go from being powerful to being fast. And in so doing, unleash the possibility of creating networks of trains and railway systems. But to get to a railway system required more than just a locomotive. It required regulation regulation that fixed train prices so that everyone could have access to the technology, that managed safety so that the trains didn't hurt people, that changed the ideas about how time should be configured so the trains would run on time. It took ideas about timetables, ideas about uh, who had rights in land. It took regulations. It took all kinds of new practitioners, ticket takers, and safety inspectors and civil engineers and those train systems unfolded in Britain and the United States and Australia and Japan and India, and in so doing transformed the way we thought about time and distance and about speed. The irony, of course, in all of this is that Industrial Revolution was nearly two centuries in the making. So getting to scale in this instance took time and it required all manner of regulations and social actors and practice to be accomplished.